Over the past week, we've seen something very strange start to occur, a rotation that central bankers are now starting to get involved in. So what is it? And could it be that bad news is actually coming for the economy and will be considered as bad news for the stock market? Well, as we climb the wall of worry, it's clear the S&P 500 isn't concerned right now. And in today's video, we'll take a look at what's next in store for that, including options and dark pool activity. Meanwhile, Mexican and Indian ETFs start to plunge, and of course, treasuries are finding a huge bid. But what chart might be the most important? Well, it could certainly come back down to oil. And in today's video, we talk about whether this is finding major demand. Let's go through stocks, commodities, and cryptos together, guys. This will be a good one. Well, welcome back, everyone, to The Daily Show. My name's Tom, and as always, let's go through the macro, the data, the lead indicators, and the hottest charts, and why they matter to all of us as investors and traders. If it's your first time here, then remember to subscribe, smash that bell icon, especially if you want to understand where money is flowing and how to start spotting it for yourself in the future. So let's begin with the first storyline, and this is just merely something I'm interested to see what your comments are down below. It turns out Elon Musk has confirmed relocating many chips, thousands of chips, in fact, from NVIDIA to his other companies. So basically, he's buying them from Tesla, three to four billion expected this year, and moving some of them to other companies. Now, I'm interested to see what you guys think this will do to the stock over the long and short term. Let me know in the comments down below. But let's get into the data straight away, because of course, you will have heard that Mexico and of Indian stock markets fell pretty heavily. Now, it's something to be concerned about. It obviously did lead to the stock markets having a little bit of a red before they recovered throughout the session in terms of the US. And we can then go and look at the stats. Now, as it turns out, over the next nine to 10 months, basically all the markets recovered. So what this really means is it is not something to necessarily be terrified of when it comes to at least the raw data, and it's probably an overreaction. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go into what's going on in the US because this week is jobs numbers. And if you're familiar with jobs numbers and our discussion about them over the last two years, you would know that they love to revise a good jobs number. Sometimes we're getting 300K new jobs added, then the next month they minus off 100K. Well, according to a new bit of a bombshell article here, you can see that supposedly the monthly non-farm payroll prints have been likely overstated in terms of job growth by 730,000 last year. That's a absolutely mind-blowing number, with hiring maybe even falling below zero back in October. So what does this mean? Well, firstly, the non-farm payroll jobs numbers don't seem to be very accurate. The other thing is that we need to look at it in kind of like a top-down approach and say, is the economy actually starting to weaken? Well, it looks like we're looking for the smallest advance in six months and if we keep revising these numbers down, then possibly it's even worse than that. So something that needs to be considered, and of course, now is it the time that bad news actually becomes bad news. So one of those people that I've been looking at is, of course, Joseph Wang's comments here over on X. You can go give him a follow if you're interested. And he said, when labor demand weakens, even as supply continues to increase with migration, we could see unemployment rates rise faster than the Fed expects. I don't know if it's this week, but it is coming. That is the path for cuts and for an everything kind of like bubble surge. Now, basically what's happening here is the discussion is, have the Fed pushed the market far enough? And as you can see here, US job openings are also continuing to fall a little bit in recent times, specifically in 2024, they're starting to drop off. Now, I think everything should be put in moderation. Now, as you can see here on this chart, we saw job openings actually standardized somewhere around here before we got the 2020 crash. So is are job openings terrible? No. Are they coming back to more normal levels? I would say yes. And I do think that we just need to look at it from the perspective of price action. Remember, if you read too much into these particular storylines, often you'll get confused and you won't be able to make the right decisions. So where are we? What's going on right now? Well, as we've stated recently, we're probably in the back end of a secular bull market. And we're starting to track very similarly to other periods of time, the 50s into the 60s, the 80s into the 2000s. And of course, we can kind of ignore the 1920s rip roar that everyone goes on about because that ended up in a super bubble that went so high compared to anything else that, of course, it was going to end incredibly badly. 
Now, this is an evolving story. It's something that we'll need to continue to discuss and look at. But generally, if you look at history and especially the market cycles of inflationary times, most notably the ones over here on the left-hand side, we still have usually more to go. So 53% is currently the amount that we've gone up in the stock market. Generally speaking, we should be looking at between 65 and 75% minimum during these particular bull market cycles. So it suggests that there's still a bit more to go on this run. And I think that's going to mean that, again, dips are probably going to be met with some kind of you know, purchasing and that you need to think about it this way. Now, why is that? Because central banks have already shown that they will not let this market fall. And in a special moving forward, I'm going to be talking about something that is absolutely mind-blowing if it does get approved and how that could unlock trillions of dollars in extra capital that can roll into markets over the next coming years. It is one of the wildest things that I've seen in some time. Speaking of which, we need to also ask ourselves, has breadth improved to a point where we could consider a new run on the markets at these new all-time highs? Well, as it turns out, we're not quite there with some of the other previous ones. You can see that we've usually been able to get into those 95 reads and we haven't got a 95 read. I do love me a good 95 read because that usually means things are really strengthening up, but we have hit 86. So we hit 86 the other day. So breadth has improved, but it's not quite the 95 read that we saw back in other previous big rallies through the markets. Something that certainly you should be looking at though. Breadth is important. So how's breadth stood up this week? With up, down, and all around in terms of markets, have we seen markets show advance or decline? Well, the good news is for the last two kind of days, or at least the last day, we've seen pretty decent advance. And you'll notice here that of the S&P 600, 507 of them were advancing and then 464. So is that a green tick? Absolutely. It shows that generally speaking, the breadth of the advance of the last couple of sessions has been pretty good. Also a sign that we may be moving to a new all-time high. Let's now have a look at another read that shows quite bullish intentions for the month of June. You can see if we have a monthly returns that are very strong in May, it tends to slip over into June and we usually see 80% of the time the market's stronger and at the end of the year, 70% of the time market stronger. And that holds up with presidential election years. So the question then becomes what or where should we be looking in terms of you know, potential sector rotation and flows and all those things. Well, just before we discuss that, we discuss the S&P 500 levels, I want to talk about the component correlation because we are starting to get into times where maybe it's getting a little bit flaky in terms of we have to be cautious, okay? And that means that we follow the price action, but we are cautious abung, uh, around these ideas of things being a little bit overbought. You can see here that we're in overbought territory when it comes to complacency, on this particular read here from Jason Gottford, you can see that short seller articles are now coming out, which I shared over on X. Short sellers now in danger of extinction after crushing stock gains. Funnily enough, this tends to happen around these periods. Let's just zoom over here. This is one I grabbed from 2022, and it says shorting is all the rage for retail investors. And if you notice the date on it, it actually came down to 2022. Now, I think the key here is that the other one said investors this one says retail investors. Now, I want retail investors like you and I to be all in and no shorts anymore because that basically means that you're getting close to that top end thing. Another thing I always look at is sometimes I look at search trends. You know, if we see everyone trending and searching for bubbles, usually that means it's not over yet, but you need to start thinking about the end of the run. Now, funnily enough, we did spike in terms of people searching bubbles over here quite recently. So that was back in March. And if we do continue to see, you know, spikes and bubbles, you'll notice that tends to happen. This is 2006, 2007. This is, of course, the 15, 16 period where we had like a sideways market. This is 18 where we ended up having the late cycle set. And of course, this is 2021, uh, about six months out to eight months out from when we ended up seeing that big bear bust. So something that we are looking at, something that we're focusing on is, of course, whether we're continuing to see that bubble uh, discussion and, and, and concept. Then we move over to the next one, which again has to do with actually articles. So we've been talking a lot about the Chinese market as an opportunity. Now, it's done incredibly well since we've been talking about it. In fact, it went up 31% from the bottom to the top using the Hang Seng. Now, we'll know recently we've actually pulled back, but guess what the article we just got is? 
China's bigger cities see housing market pick up after easing. Shanghai Shenzhen buyers show interest in new and used homes and analysts investors are optimistic the worst of the slump may be over. Now, as it turns out, this is something that we've seen before. If we go back over here to the global financial crisis, you'll notice that we see a sign housing market shows signs of recovery after an epic sell-off and that actually began the new bull run. So are we in a new bull run on the Chinese tech stocks? I would say yes in terms of what we've been analyzing on the charts and it's certainly a very interesting concept. iShares Russell 2000. Now I thought this was an interesting one because we saw a large dark pool activity trade that just came out over the last 24 hours. Now there've been a couple of these. We saw one very similar price and it ended up with a sell-off. Is this one actually a buy though? I would like it to be a buy. Let's find out whether it can get up. And then, of course, we've had one over here, which turned out to be a buy and the markets move forward. So why do I say that? Well, it's going to be important to break through these key levels because, of course, the Russell 2000 is super behind the rest of the stock market. So for a bull run to really maintain, it's pretty important that the Russell 2000 continues to make a good move for it. Let's have a look at the actual rotation over the last 24 hours. Now, with copper moving down to our key level, we saw metals fall off, gold fell off big time in stocks, ITB fell off, which is, of course, not the best, and regional banks continue to flail around with, I think it's between 66 banks plus that are in focus of possible bankruptcies due to, of course, massive losses that have been sitting there for a while. Do you remember with that storyline that we might talk about in the next video? I know it's old by now. Um, it's probably not going to crash a market because it's in plain sight. Everybody knows it's there and it's likely the central banks, of, of, especially the Fed in this case, will come out and support those smaller central banks, uh, smaller banks, I mean regional banks. As you can see over the last five days, the market has turned a little bit defensive. Healthcare, staples, utilities making up some of the top end. So it is time to be you know, cautious following the price action and obviously following what we often look at here. So let's have a quick look at the last 24 hours from a volume perspective. And we'll load that up onto the charts. And you'll notice here that the net delta was again positive. And this is what we're looking for in this recovery. One, two, three positives. The buying was also quite significant. We saw wicks down the bottom being purchased up. And that basically means that overall, who were the winners of the session? Well, if we actually look at the real session again, you'll notice that the market was selling and then ended up pretty much closing close to its high. When we go over to the futures market, again, we update those charts as well on X. If you want to follow us there, check us out in the links in the description down below. You'll notice that we have this really nice kind of trend towards the upside. What's happening here? Wick comes down, freaks out a little bit, buys up. This was an absolute nailing point. Over the last 24 hours, we have the Mexico, India kind of stuff. Everything that's going on there with yields also dropping a little bit and we get that nice buy through. And for now, it looks like the bulls are in full control of this market. Basically, they're moving it up to the most traded level. Yes, it could be possible the bears sit around this 53.25 zone, which happens to be the one day expected options move. And of course, uh, the also the, the main resistance from the previous high. But on the surface of it, you'd have to say this market looks pretty bullish. If the market does end up pulling a trap and moving down underneath that, well, I don't think this is going to hold. This would be way more significant towards that point, and it would be a very good trap indeed by the markets. Is it impossible? No, we've seen something similar to it over here where you get two nice wick buys, and then all of a sudden a big seller comes through and pushes it down. But I think everything that you're looking at, the breadth improving in S&P 600 does tend to lead into still the market at least trying for that 5330 level. All right, well, let's move over to the options. Are we in positive or negative gamma? Well, we're moving back into positive gamma a situation once again. 52.35 is now the put support. And where we are right now, spot price being 52.91 in the close, obviously higher after the close, we're back into these calls. As we run through, you can see why I've said 53.25 to 53.30 might be the high for the session because there's a lot of calls sitting there. And you can see the next session as well has a lot of calls sitting there. If we do keep pushing higher though, the markets could very quickly move towards 5,400 because you can see this absolute pressure of positive gamma that will come back in. During the June OPEX, which is the third month expiration, 5,400 remains the top strike. So I think the markets could make it to 5,400, but it's unlikely they go too much better than that. 
What about CTAs? Commodity Trade Advisors are neutral still on NASDAQ, neutral on S&P 500. On Brent, they've been selling off, which of course we now know Brent has made it all the way back down to these levels, one of our favorite potential buy zones. So we'll talk about that soon. And of course, gold actually sees an uptick in CTAs. Now, the stock, the actual market itself has been falling a little bit. So that's a very interesting sign. First sign of possible bullish momentum starting to come back into gold after that sell that we knew we need to have. Let's jump into the charts now. First up, what's going on in the options market for bonds? Well, it dropped off a little bit, again, signaling that's a little bit more bullish towards the stock market. Again, this was our only warning sign and still not enough for us to say all the markets were freaking out. That's why we remained bullish over the last 24 hours. And we can see here that treasuries have also been skyrocketing up. So very nice entry. A couple of people in our Market Masters Club were on top of this one. Actually quite replicable. Treasuries are finding quite a nice amount of bid. And that's because, of course, yields across the board are dropping off on concerns that the Federal Reserve has maybe pushed the market once again. Sound familiar? Well, yeah, it's the same old, same old. And obviously, it's there to terrify us. But at the same time, we have to look at it on the surface and on the underneath hood. Now, one of the ways that we can see whether the market is really sick or not is looking at construction. And construction has been neutral to maybe slightly negative recently, but it's still in an overall uptrend. So nothing to be concerned about yet from the home construction. You'll see here that yields are moving to the bottom echelons around 4.7. Funnily enough, they're getting there as well as US oil and Brent all smashes straight into of course, uh, the demand level. And you know that oil is one of the most sensitive to these yields. So that'll be one of the interesting stories. And then, of course, we have here S&P 500 and central bank liquidity around the world starting to increase. So clearly, there's something going on. Dow Jones transportation average as well fell off, but no new low. So stuff we're watching, but we haven't yet seen it uh, kind of rear its ugly head in these markets. And you've got to remember that. What about the US dollar? Well, the US dollar has come back down to a demand zone. We do think it looks weak. I'm looking for it to rally, potentially find sellers. This week is non-farm payrolls, jobs numbers. That usually moves the dollar through a key level of demand or supply. And in this case, we're pushing a demand. So I could see something like this occurring. And at least for now, that's the best thesis we have. Some people have said, oh, it's a double bottom. Look, it's going to go through here and up. I would say not yet because the downward trend is intact on this market. So therefore, you've got to be looking for rallies to be met by sell demand. What's your opinion on the US dollar though? Will it drop or is it going to go back up? Copper, very nice to see coming back into the 450. You might say, well, you're bull on copper. How could you be happy about this? It's the pullback we had to have. Remember, everyone was bullish over here on copper. We're bullish down here. When everyone becomes bullish, it is a problem. We saw exhaustion. We've seen pullback. We're seeing a weakening of, of course, sentiment against copper. And we're looking now for a 470 plus breakout to the upside. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with this. It's come down to 450. Now we have to be patient and react to the market actually finding a bid or not. What about oil? Something similar. And I've put in here US oil versus UK oil. So obviously Brent versus crude. And you can see both have hit into those massive zones over the last 24 hours. They came down like a freight train and now they're creating structure. Now it's my experience with charts like this that usually unless you're buying the dip and positioning in without stop losses, et cetera, you want to be fairly patient. This is the hardest thing as a trader, to wait for market structure to be created and then potentially to activate it. And I think that's what we have to do here with UK oil and US oil, although they have hit massive bull demand zones. So to me, this is a very key level. I'm watching the structure very closely. You can see it's exhausted on quite a lot of meat read uh, reads and everything that we're seeing, but non-farm payrolls as well this week could knock it around. I'm looking for maybe a new low to be formed and then to see a bounce. Uh, I do think patience, react, don't predict is a key one though when it comes to trading oil. What about gold? So a lot of people in the comment section, obviously were really bullish the previous session. They probably got hit up a little bit last night uh, or over the last session. But what we're seeing here is gold is up, down and all around. I still maintain at the moment it's still in the overall downward path. Uh, of course, we talked in the last video about this being where sellers were. They certainly were. Uh, this is, of course, where we know buyers are at the moment, although I would rather it comes down to here now and create structure. Or if it's going to find this zone, then it breaks through 2364, 2365, gets through some anchored VWAPs as well, 
And that's when we can say, okay, this was a big Wyckoff accumulation on the small time frame to allow the bulls to come back in. Good news for gold buyers, CTAs did uptick their overall purchasing. So what's happening right now with gold became very similar to copper, became an overcrowded trade, needed to have a pullback, and now it's floating around. Do remember, not really changing our gold, silver ideas, 3K for gold over the next 12 to 18 months, in my opinion, and 50 bucks per ounce for silver would be uh, pretty key. So yeah, I think both of those are still on board. We just need to uh, see it start to shake out enough people. NVIDIA, new all-time high. The stock that cannot be stopped. One of our three pillars, NVIDIA, Google, and Microsoft, some of my favorite stocks in the market. And as I've said before, I don't want to sell anything semiconductor-related, especially infrastructure-related in this late cycle uh, announcement. And we talked about this. It's kind of like Cisco and Intel back in the 1990s in terms of how it's running. And yeah, it uh, cannot be stopped at this stage. We did see a large dark pool trade in here. So we're still cautious about it being as a trade, uh, but as investors, it's still higher highs and higher lows. And as long as that's happening, it keeps happening. You can see all these gaps that are left behind though. Maybe it'll fill, maybe it won't, uh, but certainly Island Reversal did not play. And basically that would mean that the gap was going to come down and then we were going to see a sell. So if it had randomly opened down, we knew what to do, though I wouldn't still short it video myself, but that's what you would have been doing. Now, has Tesla made a decision? Well, unfortunately, Elon might be taking a few chips. I don't think stock traders will like that, but ultimately that's our opinion. So instead we look at the price action and the price action has remained long leg doji, long leg doji, long leg doji, and we're still stuck within the range. Between 170, 175 is where the buyers seem to sit and between 180, 250, 180 is where the sellers are. So if we get a close above here or a sell below there, I think we're going to have a fairly explosive move. This is now a coiled market, similar to what we saw on Bitcoin. So it could get very explosive soon. Uh, one to watch, although I'm not sure that was the best news over the last 24 hours. GameStop, not much to update. 26.50 holding through. As we know, the expiration of, I think, Roaring Kitties calls are somewhere around here after the earnings call. Look, as always, proceed with caution. You know, best case scenario was up here, in my opinion. Um, and we did see that in pre-market. So obviously it has technically hit. We've almost filled the gap to where it started. It's an interesting point for it, but yeah, proceed with caution as we always say on charts. HSI, Chinese stock market now. Well, good signs coming out on the papers. And of course, people are starting to feel a little bit more bullish on it. I'm upset it didn't manage to close a daily above here uh, because of course that means that we're not quite confirmed as a technical buy. Uh, we certainly have oversold metrics. We certainly came back to a level I like, uh, but yeah, might have to wait for another day to get that confirmation as a trader. As an investor or position base, it's at a not a bad level. Aussie 200 seems to be recovering and moving up. UK 100 was actually uh, pretty interesting and certainly had some very nice trading on it over the last 24 hours. Really liked this trade. Um, we talked about it in our community and yeah, it looks like it's going up. So certainly one that I don't mind there. US 2K, very weak you know, compared to the rest of the market. So obviously we're looking for uh, it to probably break through around this 2051 zone to really find buyers coming back in. This should be doing better considering the yields dropping off. But I think it's because people are now considering, oh, what's actually going on with the economy? Maybe bad news is bad news. Remember, when that actually happens, usually you're at the end. So if bad news becomes bad news, when bad news is good news, it keeps on going, wall of worry. But when bad news is bad news, that's when you need to start questioning a few things. I don't know if we're at that point just at this stage. Let's move over to the NASDAQ now, and we'll bring that one up on the charts. You can see again, playing playing around with that resistance high. I think the S&P is the better read, uh, but yeah, very nice. And uh, it looks to be trying to break out past 18 seven two five ish we should be moving up to ideally about 18.9 so still remains quite bullish on this chart and then there was bitcoin bitcoin is continuing to move higher which is something we've discussed over last sessions love this closure love this love this now i want this thing to break through 72 and a half um, and as i expect you know a coiling market usually means an explosive breakout so if it gets through 72.5 i could see it really moving fairly heavily we'll see whether it can get it done and uh, so far, it's been coiling now for about two weeks. So the breakout here could be quite significant. 
As always, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, remember to subscribe and smash that like button. Do remember there's a bunch of news coming out this week. In particular, we're looking at these non-farm payrolls numbers. It's expected the economy is growing. Unemployment will remain basically flat. And uh, obviously, we'll look at the revisions more than anything else. So will it be shocking? Uh, probably. <laughs> we'll have to find out. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Follow us on some of the socials in the links down below. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.